Welcome to iLecture Online. Now that we've seen the basic approach on how to find the maximization or minimization of a two-dimensional problem, two-dimensional meaning only with two variables, and we could do that graphically, of course, we're now going to see some very practical examples of this technique. And again, the way you solve the problems is following a very predetermined number of steps. There's about nine of them, and if you follow it like that, it's actually not a bad problem to solve. So here's a good example. Let's say we have a company, a loan company, who has $50 million to loan out. And they've determined that uh, with home loans, they get about a 5% return, and with car loans, they get about a 6% return. But because of the mix that they want to achieve, they say that they want the home loans to account for at least four times the amount of the car loans. It could be bigger, but not smaller. So based upon that, what kind of arrangements for car loans and home loans do they, do they need to set up in their portfolio in order to maximize the profits? So that's the idea. Okay, step one, you you want to define the two variables, in this case x and y, so always use variables that are not representative of what you're looking for, so interest or profit or anything like that, no, no, just use x and y, so determine the variables or define the variables where you go x is equal to, and you need to be very specific how you define them, we're going to define them as the number of dollars uh, spent on home loans, so x equals the number or the dollars for home loans, and then y can be the dollars for car loans. And so it has to be very specific that x represent the number of dollars and y represent the number of dollars for car loans. After all, you want to know how many dollars you're going to set up for home loans and how many dollars you're going to set up for car loans. The second thing you want to do is determine the objective. And that's often overlooked because you usually can read it right out of the problem. If you read the text, you say, okay, you're trying to determine the, the profit, trying to, uh, trying to maximize the profit or trying to minimize the cost or anything like that. You really want to define that. You want to write it out. So in this case, we want to determine, not determine, but we want to maximize the profit. So maximize profit is the objective. Once you determined what the objective is, you need an objective function, an equation that will calculate what that is, the profit, the cost, or whatever else you're looking for. So in this case, you want to determine the objective function. And so how do you determine the profit? Well, you can say that the profit, which is going to be a function of x and y, is going to be equal to the amount of dollars, right here, the amount of dollars you're going to, you're going to expend on home loans times the return. So it's going to be x times 0 0.05. That will be the amount of money you'll make off of the home loans because X is the number of dollars for home loans and 0 0.05 is the amount of profit you'll make or the return you'll make on your home loans plus Y which is the amount of dollars you'll spend on or you'll give out on car loans times the return which is 0 0.06. So this will be the objective function, the profit function and you want to maximize this quantity right here. The next thing you want to do is come up with the constraints. So you want to determine the constraints. And usually there's always something that will constrain you. There's a finite amount of money, there are some conditions that need to be met. So in this case, we know that we have a finite amount of money. We have $50 million. So therefore, you know that x plus y has to be less than or equal to $50 million. I'll just do it in terms of millions of dollars. So 50 is the number of millions of dollars. And so x plus y together cannot be more than that can be less, but not more. You say, well, less. Well, sometimes it, it turns out that you get the maximum profit or, or minimum cost by not using all of your dollars. That's probably not the case here, but it can happen. The next one constraint is that the amount of home loans should be at least four times as big as the amount of car loans. And since X represents the number of home loans, we can say that X must be greater than or equal to four times Y. That's the second constraint. Of course, you also know that x must be greater or equal to 0, and y must be greater or equal to 0. We don't necessarily write that, but of course, that's understood that that's also some of the constraints. So these are the constraints. Now, the fifth thing we want to do is take the constraints, which are in terms of inequalities, and turn them into equations, because those will be the boundaries of the region where we graph the problem, the boundary of the regions that we're interested in. So we want to find those boundaries by finding the equations. So the fifth step is uh, take the constraints and turn them into equations. And so the only thing you do is take the inequality and, of course, make them to an equal sign. But it's not the only thing you want to do. So if we do that, we get x plus y 
is equal to 50, and then we get x is equal to 4y. What you want to do then is the equation then needs to be put into the y equals mx plus b form so you can graph it. So you want to take your equation and go y equals mx plus b. So in this case, you want the y on the left side, the x on the other side, so this becomes x is equal to minus, oh, not x. I just said y needs to be on the left side. So y is equal to minus x plus 50. So by moving the x to the right side of the equation, it becomes a negative. And then here, you can see that uh, we need to divide both sides by 4 and turn the equation around. So you get y is equal to 1 fourth x. So there's the two equations that are derived from the two constraints. Those will now become the boundaries of the regions that we're interested in. We want to find, of course, the region of interest that's defined by these uh, constraints. So the sixth thing we do is we're going to graph. Graph the equations we just came up with. So we need an x-y axis. So there's our, um, our y-axis. There's our x-axis. And let's grab our first equation here. y equals minus x plus 50. So 50 is the intercept. So that's right over here. So it'll be 50. And you see that the slope is a minus 1, right? m is a slope, minus 1. So the line will go down like this. And then when we get there, that will be 50 over here. You can see that when y is equal to 0, x equals 50. So that's the line represented by this equation. So sometimes I label those lines. So this is line number 1. And of course, that continues on both sides of the equation like this. So there's line number 1 y equals minus x plus 50. All right, what about line number two? y equals a quarter x. So there's no plus b term. That means the intercept is at the origin. The slope is positive, and the slope is 1 fourth. So that means the rise is 1, the run is 4. So the line probably looks something like this. That's equation number two. And here's the equation is y is equal to 1 quarter x. And here the equation is y equals minus x plus 50. So those are the two equations. Now notice there's a bunch of regions here. There's a region over here, a region there, a region there, a region there. Now, which of those regions is the region of interest? In other words, that region represents the physical area, the financial area in which you can operate. The amount of money you can give off to loans, how much you give to home loans, how much you give to car loans, how much profit you're going to make, that all can be determined by which region satisfies these two inequalities. So you need to find the region of interest. And to do that, you pick a test point and you plug it into your inequality to see which side of that line satisfies inequality. So let's take the first inequality here, x plus y less than or equal to 50. That's this line right here. And, uh, or that's the boundary of that region. And let's plug in a test point. I'm going to use the test point 0, 0. So use the test point. 0, 0 is always a good test point unless the line goes right to it. Notice you cannot use that test point for the second inequality because that boundary goes right through that point. You'll have to pick a different point. But for this inequality, we can. So if you go 0 plus 0, is that less than or equal to 50? That's the question mark. And the answer is, of course, yes. 0 is less than 50, which means that our test point lies in the correct side or the correct region bounded by this line right here. So this, this region is what we want. That means that region is what we don't want. And traditionally, you want to go ahead and get rid of that region. We don't want that. And of course, we know that uh, y cannot be less than 0 and x can also not be less than 0. All right, so this first inequality bounds all that away, so we're left with this triangle right here. Now, the second line will determine if we're going to operate in this region or in that region. All right, we need a test point. Hmm, let's see, what's a good test point? How about 10, 0? If we pick this point right here, that's the point 10, 0. And does that lie on the right, on the correct side, the side that we want, that is divided by this line right here? Okay, let's try that. So our next test point is going to be 10, 0. And if we plug that, if we plug in a 10 for x and a 0 for y, does that satisfy the inequality? And so notice that when x is equal to 10 and y is equal to 0, 10 is greater than 0. That satisfies inequality. So again, I picked the test point on the correct side of this line, which means this region is what I want. This region is not the region I want. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that region. 
Notice that this region now here is the region in which I can operate if I'm going to have $50 million and spend it on giving out car loans and home loans. And now the question is, how much money, how much of that $50 million should I give out on home loans and how much on car loans to maximize the profit? That will be determined by the points of this region. So this is a region of interest. I can operate anywhere within that region bounded by those constraints, which means I have a point over there, I have a point over there, I have a point over there. So those are what we call the critical points. We have to determine the critical points. Oh, by the way, I think I skipped a step. I went ahead and did it, but I didn't write it down. Step number seven means determine the region. I just went ahead and didn't tell you that that's what I was doing. That's step number seven. So after we graph the lines, step number seven is determining the region, which means step number eight is finding the critical points, finding those specific points. Now, two of the three are easy to find. This point, of course, is the point zero, zero. This point right here is the point 50, 0, but this point right there, I don't know what that is, not easily found. What I need to do there is realize that is the intersection between the two equations from the graph. That's these two equations right here, which means I have to solve those two equations simultaneously to find the coordinates of that critical point right there. So I'm going to take um, y equals minus x plus 50 and y equals 1 quarter of x. If we, find, if we want to find the intersection of those two lines, I'm setting them equal to each other, which means that minus x plus 50 must equal 1 quarter x. All right. Well, first I'm going to get rid of the decimal, or not decimal, but the fraction. Multiply both sides by 4. If I multiply both sides by 4, I get minus 4x plus 200 equals x. Moving all the x's to one side, all the numbers to the other side, I get minus 4x minus x equals minus 200, or minus 5x equals minus 200. And if I divide both sides of the equation by minus 5, I get x equals 40. So that means x equals 40. And so this point here has the x-coordinate 40. And to find the y-coordinate, all I have to do is plug it in here. Minus 40 plus 50, that's minus 40 plus 50 is plus 10. That means y is equal to 10. y equals 10, and so the y-coordinate of that point is, is 10. That means I have now found the three points of my region of interest, the three points defined by the boundaries and by the constraints there. The last step now is to go ahead and plug the coordinates of those three critical points into my objective function right here to see what the value of that objective function will be for each of those critical points. What is the profit at this point? What is the profit at that point? What's the profit at that point? And whatever gives me the highest profit, that's where I want to operate at. That's where I find the x and y values I want to operate at to maximize my profit. So let's go ahead and do that. So step number nine, we're going to evaluate the objective function. So let's try the objective function again over here. So the objective function is p is equal to 0.05x plus 0.06y. And so the first thing I'm going to take my first point right here, the point when x equals 0 and y is equal to 0 is equal to, so all I do is plug in the 0 for x and 0 for y, and I think it becomes quite obvious that that will give me 0 profit. So 0 0.06 times 0 equal to 0, and that makes sense because if I lend out zero dollars for home loans and zero dollars for car loans, I'm going to make zero profit, so you definitely don't want to operate over here. So let's try this point over here. The profit when x equals 50 and y equals zero. Okay, so x represents the amount of dollars for home loans. Remember, the constraint was that I want the home loans to be at least four times as big as the car loans, and I make, can make it all home loans and see what, what happens. So we have 0 0.05 times 50 plus 0 0.06 times 0. Well, 50 times this, that would be 2.5. And of course, that was in millions of dollars, which means if I take all of the $50 million and spend it on home loans, I would make $2.5 million of profit per year. Okay, what if I operate at this point right here? Okay, so we're going to evaluate the objective function, P, 
40 and 10, which means x equals 40, y equals 10. So this is 0 0.05 times 40 plus 0 0.06 times 10. And that would be 2 plus 0.6. That would be 2.6. So notice, if I operate at this location, let me get my red pen out. If I operate at this location right here, where x equals 40 and y equals 10, I will make a profit of $2.6 million. Now, the interesting thing about this is we can operate anywhere within the region or along any of these boundaries. But the critical points are going to give you the maximum or minimum values. And so therefore, it's only important to evaluate the critical points. And of the three critical points I have, one of them will give me the highest profit, which means that's how I operate, which means x equals 40 coming over here. It's the number of dollars uh, given out for home loans, and y is over here, the number of dollars for car loans. So finally, the solution, I guess you can call 10 the solution. It's always a good idea to write that out. So that means $40 million for home loans and $10 million, and I, I should put an M there, for car loans. And of course, if you do that final step 10, it shows that you know what you're doing and you can interpret the results from step number nine when you evaluate the objective function. You realize that for me to make the maximum profit, I need to be right over here. So usually I put like a little star next to it and say X equals 40, Y equals 10. That will give me the maximum profit. And that's how we solve a problem like that.